Hey everyone, um, it's been a little bit of a while between my last video and this video. Um, this one I'm hoping to actually do as a uh, beginner's guide to the uh, FPGA board, the MISTER project. Uh, an FPGA, for people who don't know, is a field programmable gate array. In simplest terms, it's a chip that can be programmed um, inside it are a whole heap of uh, little gates or little chips if you want to sort of think about it that way all change, chained together in a big matrix and what you can do is you can upload or flash um, uh, an image to it and then it will behave exactly like the chip um, that you've uploaded because it's hardware it's hardware based it's not software based emulation so um, it's actually hardware based and you can get some really good stuff running and um, it's it's a lot of people are, are new to FPGAs because they're used to having uh, emulators in DOS or Windows or you know Linux or whatever OS you're running. Um, people are used to that, um, so this is something a little bit new. Uh, some people are a little bit daunted by it, like um, you know they think it's too hard to get into, uh, or or you know it, it's just it's not going to work for them. Now I know what FPGAs are. I've worked with them in the past. Uh, I'm an electronics engineer, so I've done all that sort of thing, so that stuff's not new to me. Uh, but the MISTER was. Um, there was also the MIST project, which was before the MISTER, and um, I wasn't into that at all. So um, I just wanted to do a video for beginners to show the faults that I did, the stuff I learnt when I actually um, started mine. Now, mine was donated to me, um, so I didn't actually buy it. Uh, Buffalo Joe sent it to me um, as a... Uh, as sort of a present, so a big thanks to him. If you see him in the uh, Discord, just send him a message and say, hey, thanks, you know, um, because that supports me. It means I didn't have to go out and buy the uh, D10 Nano, uh, which is what's the name of the FPGA evaluation board that we're using. Now, this one here, this is actually the D10 Nano, okay? Um, you won't get it with the heat sink on. Um, that comes a little bit later. I think it comes with the IO board, which we'll go into. Um, but as you can see, I've, I've put the heat sink on, but I've done it properly. I've used heat sink paste. Um, later on in the video, I'll talk about the uh, Amiga core for the Mister and stuff that I found out um, to make the uh, Amiga core run a lot better. Uh, one of those things quickly was that the FPGA was getting too hot. Now, a lot of these I've seen, they've got like sticky pads underneath. Some of them are fairly thick. Some of them are not so thick. Um, that sticky stuff doesn't conduct... Uh, heat very well at all. Uh, so I recommend you get like some of this little stuff. This is uh, heat sink paste glue. So it's actually a glue. So it's, it's it's a heat transfer paste, but it actually glues it on, uh, which is what you want. So there's there's two different types. There's pastes and then there's paste glue. So you want the glue. So this is the one I used. It's fairly common. It's enough. It doesn't have to be really, really expensive unless you really, really want to. Uh, but that was one of the fixes that I found was that the FPGA was getting too hot and the Amiga core was crashing and locking up and doing all stupid things like that. So that's one part of it that um, I learned um, through doing work on the actual um, MISTER. Um, the Amiga core is the core I've got the most experience with. It was the core that I really wanted. Um, I'm actually building an Amiga 1200, uh, but it's been a long build. It's probably about four or five years and I've pimped it out and I will eventually get to it. And um, the game I'm running is called The Settlers. Uh, it's probably my favorite game of all time. I love it. I've played it so many times. It's just so much enjoyable. And the Amiga version is so much better than the PC version. Uh, hence why my interest in actually building an Amiga 1200. Uh, I've had a fair bit of experience with Amigas. I, be, I built a 500, then I built a 600 inside a 500 case. Um, so that was tricky, but then I just didn't have enough expansion, so I had to go to the 1200. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So this is the D10 Nano. It's an FPGA evaluation board. Um, the, actual, the, actual, um, PGA, the actual chip itself is made by Intel. Um, and uh, well actually owned by Intel I don't think I'm not sure if they're manufacturing it at their actual silicon plants or who's actually doing the chips uh, but it's basically like a system on a chip an SOC um, it's got RAM it's got RAM it's got the CPU uh, it's got the FPGA and then it's also got an ARM core as well that can be used as well but this is the this is the guy this is the D10 Nano this is what you get when you buy one um, that's oops pump that out this is what you get so you got HDMI coming out here you got an on-the-go um, 
USB port, you've got expansion here, expansion here, expansion here, uh, more RAM, uh, USB, and, and obviously Ethernet there as well. So it comes with a lot of stuff. Um, there are some sites that will actually sell you a complete kit that I'm going to get into, uh, but when I got mine, it was already, it came with everything. So that's, that's the D10 Nano, guys. So I'll be going over a little bit more with it, but I'll just run through all the hardware pieces. So that, that's one board, obviously, that you need. You can't do anything else. Now, before I go too far, there are a lot of cores that don't need any extra add-ons. You can run this, it's got HDMI, it'll go straight into your TV, your monitor, or whatever that you're using. And there are a lot of cores that don't need any memory expansion, they don't need the I.O. board, they don't need anything. Just a D10 Nano will run. So you don't have to have these extra boards, but they do allow you to run uh, more cores and um, or have more memory and, and so more features, etc., etc. So that's a D10 Nano, guys. Um, you can search for them on eBay. Uh, they're around 200 to 250 uh, Australian dollars. Um, so you'll have to do a conversion if you're from the US and you're watching this. So that's the D10 Nano. Now the next board that I recommend you get is a USB hub. Now this bolts underneath the Mister. Um, you can see this one's been uh, part of the Mr. Project, obviously, because it's got Mr. written on it. Um, so this is just a little, it's basically just a, a powered USB hub. So basically you've got the on-the-go connection, so that connects into your D10, and then you need this little guy, which is just a, a power splitter. Um, so power goes in there, splits out, so you plug one into the, one into the hub. Wait, actually what I'll do is I'll go under here. Now this should fit in here. So you can see that I've got, I've already got standoffs on mine, uh, ready to go. So, uh, so you can just bolt that guy in. So just get your little hex, uh, your brass hex spacers. I'll just put two in just for the, you know, ease of the video, just to show what he does. So yeah, so go, grab the splitter. One power goes to the D10 Nano, to the FPGA, and the other one goes to the powered USB port. And then that goes to your power in. So now you've got a USB hub, so you can plug more devices in. Now I like this one because you can bolt it to the bottom, and then it just plugs in to your D10 like that, and that's it. And now you've got a powered USB hub, uh, which you can plug stuff into, uh, like uh, hard drives. You can run external hard drives now, uh, which is a pretty cool feature and you can put uh, ISO images on there or ROMs or whatever you want to do So you're not just limited to the SD card and that was one thing that I found when I was doing uh, mine is um, There's actually two SD cards. There's one on the actual uh, D10 Nano, which is just in here uh, If you can see so you just push him and he pops out This is the one you want to use. I made a mistake and was trying to use the one on the IO board which is this one that one there, that's the secondary um, uh, SD card slot. So I was trying to actually get the unit to run on that, and of course it wouldn't run because I was using the wrong um, the wrong slot. So that was, yeah, a beginner's mistake. So yeah, so now you've got your hub on your bottom, which is cool. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Now, next one is uh, your memory expansion. Uh, if you're going to want to run the Amiga core or the Neo Geo or quite a few games, you need to have uh, extra memory. Now this is a 32 meg, um, as far as I know I think there's a 64 and a 128. Um, do you really need the 128? Uh, for some of the Neo Geo stuff you do, um, but if you're starting out you might as well just buy the 128, that way you've got it, you don't have to fiddle around. Um, I didn't, I didn't, um, I knew that I only really wanted to run the Amiga course so I only got a 32 uh, and that was donated again by um, Buffalo Joe. Now we come into the I.O. board. Now the I.O. board gives you uh, VGA out, which is good for RGB, and sound. So they're the main two outputs. Uh, that's not USB, it's a serial um, I.O. port. Now something a little bit different on mine, you can see this fan's not the same one as uh, if you've looked at any of the pictures. Now the fans that come with these, this is another area that helped with the to cool down the FPGA for the um, Amiga core. Now. The Mister runs on 5 volts, it's a 5 volt system, uh, so your fan here should be a 5 volt fan, uh, but what a lot of people do, because 12 volt fans are a little bit cheaper, um, they put a 12 volt fan there and then plug it into the, the plus 5. Now that does work, but the fan doesn't spin anywhere near as fast as what it actually should, so I recommend that you actually replace the fan with a, f a true 5 volt version. The one I recommend is this little guy, it's made by uh, Senyo Denki, 
Uh, it's a San Ace 40, a 109P040, 5H906. So if we can get a little picture of that, if that's going to focus. This is the one I recommend. It's a 5 volt fan. Uh, Sanyo Denki is some of the best fans you money can buy. Um, Intel used them for a lot of their CPU coolers, so um, that just says, hey, you know, these are good fans for their high-end stuff. So, so that's the fan. So that's replacing the fan, and that's pretty easy. Um, you've just got two bolts. Well, there's actually three. I only put two in, uh, and and just unplug it. Now, on this, I put a, a pin header in, um, but you don't have to. You could you could just bend up the actual plug and or just wire it in, or you know, it's not too hard to do. It's just two wires, um, plus and minus, and they're actually marked uh, on the board which is which. Um, so that makes things a little bit easier. So I'll just plug that back in. So yeah, so yeah, so that's one of the mods that I did for the uh, to help with the Amiga core. Um, so yeah, so that's the I/O board. Um, it's it's um, yeah very useful for VGA uh, and and obviously audio by 3.5 mil. Now, one of the reasons why this heatsink is so short, if you have a look, if I can get a good shot, you can see it's not very tall, is because the I/O board sits on top. Now, the seat, it can't be too high or else it'll actually hit the actual fan or it'll hit the PCB. Um, so I'll put this guy back on. Now, when you're doing this, be really, really careful um, because the pins, if they don't line up, you're going to start bending stuff and you don't want to do that. So just take it slowly, put it on there. So that's on. So that's how she sits. Okay, she's not powered, she gets power through the pins, uh, so you, you don't need to have a triple splitter. Um, there's the fan, obviously, the LEDs that tell you what's going on. Uh, one of these is reboot, um, and there's a few things you can you can define what the buttons do. Um, I don't really use them, I use a USB wireless keyboard that I plug into the, to the, to the hub, and then I just do everything with the mouse and the keyboard, um, which is really groovy, you don't need to do any configuration work, just plug it in and they run. Um, which is pretty cool. So now we've got the memory board. So yeah, so this is just a 32. You can see the plugs in there. Now be really careful with this one. Again, you don't want to bend any pins. And it goes in. Come on. Just be really gentle. And that's it. And she's in. So there you go, guys. That's actually a complete mister. That'll do pretty much anything that you want to do. Um, it's, it's, it's not that big, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a good size, I like it. Um, I've just got a little plastic, this is just a plastic case that I had, uh, and I just bolted inside and, and it just sits in there. So that's my case, it's, um, yeah, not very good looking, but does the job. Now the next thing is, how are you going to power this whole thing? Now, most power supplies that come with them, if they do, are only like 2 or 3 amps at 5 volts. This guy here, this is a Meanwell power supply. They're built really, really well. Uh, it, they work very well. Um, I do recommend them. I use Meanwell brand for a lot of power supplies at the arcade. So this is a 5 volt, 5 amp supply. So this will power a mister. It'll power if you've got USB powered speakers and you plug them into your hub. It's got enough power to do that. Uh, it's even got enough power to run an OSSC, a... Um, open source scan converter, it'll do that as well. And it comes with the right plug, which is really cool. So all you have to do is grab this end, plug it into the splitter, like so. You might have to remove some of the little bit of plastic around the actual outer there, because it won't let you plug it in fully, but it plugs in and, and that's it. And then you just got an IEC on here, plug which is standard for, for everyone all over the world, uh, and you plug that in. So that's, um, yeah, that's the Meanwhile power supply. It's, uh, GST40A05-P1J So yeah, so that's that's what I run now running a bigger power supply with more current running a proper 5 volt fan and putting proper Heatsink paste underneath the heatsink So when you take the heatsink off make sure you take off all the sticky stuff So it's all it's just bare aluminium. You don't want to have anything left over. So just clean that off uh, Use some cotton buds or whatever you want to use um, that's that's all good, but the, the, the top of the FPA JA chip and the bottom of the heatsink must be nice and clean. And you don't have to use all of this. You, know, you only need enough just to push it down, 
give it a little bit of a wiggle so that it actually sets down and it's good just give it around it's fine this is not conductive so if it hits anything else it's not gonna hurt or, or cause any problems so there you go guys that's the mister um, that's some of the pitfalls I fell into when I was doing it um, the other thing is with setup I probably should do a video on that basically you need a little SD card obviously which you plug into the actual base unit now what I did is I started copying files over to the SD card and wondering why the thing's not working. There is actually a program uh, that you, a formatter, an SD card formatter, and it puts all the files in the right place. It creates the Linux boot um, directory that the ARM boots off. Um, so it creates all that. So to make an SD card, you have to do that first. Now when you do that, Windows will say, oh, there's petitions on here that aren't formatted. Do you want to format them? Make sure you always say no. Um, or you're going to wipe out your Linux um, directories and then the mister won't work anymore. You're only interested in the one directory, which is either NTFS or it's FAT32. I assume it's NTFS. I, um, I haven't actually checked. I just copied stuff over and it all worked. Um, so, yeah, so once you've set it up uh, with the, the utility, um, I recommend that you wipe the SD card first. That'll be one of the options. And then there's one that just says load all files, um, boot plus files, I think it says. Uh, but yeah, so when you've done that, then you're ready to to, to get the cores, uh, your ROM packs, or whatever you want to do. Uh, all that sort of stuff, your cores, your ROM packs, all that, that can be copied straight over to the SD. You don't need a special utility to do that. Um, so yeah. So there you go, guys. There's the beginner's guide to the Mister. Um, it's really cool. Um, I love it. The Amiga core, once you get the mods that I've done to this guy, uh, is it runs absolutely smooth. Uh, there's no slowdowns, there's no crashes, there's no lockups anymore. It's all good. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, hopefully my next video will be a little bit sooner. And I hope you enjoy.